everybody about is uh, Tom in the back actually has invitations today for the grand reopening of the Northeast Cancer Center. Uh, it's Thursday, June 27th at 4.30, so make sure you please get one of those to come and check out the, the new and improved Cancer Center. Uh, it was a complete renovation of the entire center, uh, including all of the equipment that was pulled out and replaced with brand new state-of-the-art technology that's going to allow us to be able to be the first in the Northeast Houston market to perform some of the latest uh, therapies in cancer treatment. And so one of the things I wanted to focus on today was the relationship and partnership we have with UT Oncology, represented by three providers in the back of the room. And I'm going to invite one of them to come up and, and just talk to you briefly about herself. Uh, the first is Dr. Kalidas, who is in the back. Her, uh, she is our full-time medical oncologist through this program that will be at Northeast 100% uh, of her time dedicated to providing cancer, uh, cancer treatment and therapy to our uh, to our patients of this area and beyond. So we're pleased to have her, and I'll have her come up and introduce herself. Uh, Dr. Saeed is also in the back of the room with UT Oncology. Uh, his focus, he, he does do some general oncology, but his real focus is in urology. He will pre be providing specialty uh, support services to Dr. Cletus through urology treatment and, and, and opportunities as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a third member of the team from a physician perspective that is uh, not here today. Her name is Dr. Annalise Gonzalez, uh, and her focus, in addition to supporting some of the general oncology efforts, will be breast cancer. Uh, and so all of those therapies will be offered now uh, full-time at Northeast Hospital. In addition, we have Christy uh, in the back. Uh, she's a nurse practitioner that works with all of the physicians in terms of providing support, uh, seeing patients in the clinic, um, uh, so on and so forth. So we're very excited about that partnership with UT Oncology. That's ultimately what's going to drive the use of the technology and ultimately be the resource for our patients to receive the best possible cancer treatment. So with that, I'd like to invite Dr. Kalidas up just to say a few words about um, uh, herself and the program. Thank you, Lee. Thank you all for letting me speak today for just a minute or two. Um, I, let me give you just a quick background on myself. I've been out of training for about 12 years now, um, pretty much sort of raised in that medical center. And um, the next six years after training, I spent actually at the breast care center at Baylor, seeing all breast cancer patients. Decided I wanted to sort of broaden my scope of practice, went to Austin, was in private practicing general oncology for a couple of years, and then the last three years at the VA in Temple. And thoroughly enjoyed, loved general oncology, loved seeing my cancer patients. Um, I'm extremely happy to be back home and back in the Houston area. I am really excited about this collaboration that UT has with Memorial Hermann. The new radiation equipment is essential to offering patients state-of-the-art radiation treatment, but it's also nice having medical oncology in the same building as radiation oncology because medical oncology is truly strong when you have all the disciplines working together. Radiation oncology, medical oncology, surgical oncology, and, you know, right now with the program, I'm the general oncologist. Dr. Saeed is going to focus on urological cancer, such as bladder cancer, kidney, and prostate cancer. Dr. Gonzalez focus on focuses on breast cancer as well as gynecological tumors, such as uterine, ovarian, cervical cancer. We have a GI specialist starting in August. Um, and eventually we will have more subspecialists. We will have clinical trials. And hopefully down the line, we will also have maybe surgeons coming in to have this multidisciplinary clinic, which is very efficient for the patient as far as their treatment and care. And um, overall, is helps it helps us provide everything you can get in the medical center, but locally, so the patients don't have to have the frustration of, of going down there. And that's really what we're hope, striving for. So I just also, as a last point, if anybody would like, I, I love educating people no matter where it is. So school districts, businesses, if anybody would like for me to come out and talk about cancer-related issues, I'm more than happy to, and um, please see me afterwards.
notice the tie, it has some purple in it, and that, that is by design. I am a proud Uncle High School graduate, 1983. So you can do the math. I'm celebrating our 30 year class reunion. We have a big party set up for August 10th. We had about 303 in our class, and we've already had 90 folks that bought tickets. So we're very excited. It's going to be a great, great uh, reunion. So with that lead in, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Charles Ned, principal here at Lowell High School, to give us an update of what all is happening here at the great school and the great fighting Wildcats. Thank you, Scott. Again, guys, welcome. Uh, it, it always is uh, a great pleasure for me to welcome you into Humble High School. Um, how many of you get your first time here? Okay, great, great. Glad that you could join us. Uh, special welcome to you all again. Uh, as Scott reiterated earlier, I'd like to you know, give a welcome all of our public officials and also congratulate our newly elected public officials. We appreciate the time that you invest in our students and in our community as well. Um, you know, as you walk around, obviously, you know, looking at the month of June, you know, on the calendar, you understand that that, that means, you know, one thing, I don't see Justin here, our good with mall manager, so I'm sure he probably has his hands full at the mall right now with all the kids, because when they're not here during the day, that's where they hang out. But, um, you know, it's relatively, it seems like it's relatively quiet here, but believe it or not, uh, there's a wealth of, um, you know, remediation going on here within the law of Humble High School. We're hosting the district's summer school program, where the middle schoolers are receiving remediation for the state assessment, in addition to coursework that they may have had some deficits in, you know, in order to be promoted to the ninth grade. In addition to that, we currently have right, right on the next hallway, we have several tax courses going on to prepare our, our juniors and our seniors and our outer school retesters for the July tax examination. Uh, we also are hosting the night school program and also the credit recovery program here for the district. Uh, in addition to that, you probably won't see it because it's in the far, far, far front of the building, but we're also holding the community breakfast and lunch program here as well. So we have a lot of little kids, uh, daycare kids that's walking around, you know, getting their breakfast and their lunch. So this is definitely a hub of activity. And obviously that's what you're going to have in many of our community schools, <laughs> you know, being able to service you know, our students in our community in multiple ways. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, really, this is very fresh new information. It's so new that, you know, we're still all trying to grasp and wrap our head around, you know, what it all means. So I'm going to walk you through some slides and just give you some highlights of House Bill 5. House Bill 5, it's what's been proposed, it had been proposed in the, in the House of Legislatures for quite some time, and it had gotten some traction it had made its way up through the House and the Senate, and there were two versions that finally made its way to Governor Perry's desk. But the final version that was signed upon, and as of last, actually last Monday around noon, is when he finally signed it into law. I want to make sure that I'm giving you accurate information, so I'm going to reference my notes as well as I go through the slides. Just, just that I'm not reading them to you, but I just want to make sure that you have an adequate amount of information as it relates to House Bill 5. And the primary purpose of House Bill 5 is just to provide our kids with greater flexibility as it relates to their graduation plan. You know, currently kids are, the, the, the minimum plan that they can graduate on is, 20, is 22 credits. The recommended plan is 26. So every student, uh, you know, currently are on a 26 credit plan. And if there are some issues or if there are some struggles that they find in terms of being able to hit the 26, some students are dropped down to 22, but we have to be careful about the number of kids that we allow to drop to 22, uh, because then that will trigger a red flag, you know, with the state and whatnot, because our goal is to get all kids to graduate at least on the recommended plan. But with House Bill 5, it's uh, proposing a, a plan called the, Founda the Foundation High School Program, and that's one that really encourages kids to uh, earn career pathway endorsements on their way towards their diploma. Some of the key components of House Bill 5, and this is probably the biggest, the biggest success that I can speak towards as it relates to House Bill 5 is the fact that previously our students had 15 in the course examinations that they were required to take in pass. 
fourth graduate year. <coughs> I was by reduces the number of the course examinations from 15 to 5. And you can see the five tests that our students would have to take and be successful on in order to graduate. So this is one that, you know, we're really looking at, you know, as you can tell, Algebra 1, Biology, U.S. History, English 1, English 2, those are 9th and 10th grade subjects. So any of you with 9th and 10th graders, I mean, they're going to be, they're, they're going to be the ones that's really, uh, you know, on the front line as it relates to the examination, but 5 is better than 15, you know, any way you slice it, any mathematical language, you know, much better. Some of the core requirements that's listed, that's noted, as far as the foundation uh, graduation plan is concerned, it, it takes out it takes out some of those courses that students primarily needed to take. They had no choice. They had to take algebra two. They had to take physics. Okay, those were some courses where there weren't any negotiating on you being able to take them. As you look at what's required in terms of, we had the old four, four by four previously. And now, it's not necessarily four years at all four core subjects, but it's providing there some options where you can choose to take the fourth math class or the fourth science, but as far as what's fundamentally required, it ties into your four Englishes and then everything else is three years uh, with the five, with five electives. With us being an, an international baccalaureate school, our ninth and tenth grade kids, they're going to take eight subjects, so they're not going to be able to double up on two subjects that you would get a PE credit for. So they can't be in athletics and marching band because what's going to take the place of that marching band is a foreign language. So they're forced to go foreign language, so to speak. So you know, it's one of those things that you know is extremely important in this day and age, and obviously, it's one of those things that's required underneath the foundation. These are some of the, th these are plans with endorsements where kids can have endorsements, you know, in STEM area, science, tech, engineering, and math, business industry, uh, public services, arts and humanities, and multidisciplinary studies. And obviously this speaks to a lot of the practitioners here in the room as it relates to students having emphasis on a specific subject area. This is where as early as eighth grade, you need to be able to go into what we call bridges and determine which pathway you're going to choose to take. So you need to have a, somewhat of an idea. You know, a lot of kids don't. But in ninth grade, you know, what do I want to be? You know, when I grow up, because your coursework is going to be geared towards that. And it makes sense, right, where you're going to take courses that center around if, you, if your desire is to be a doctor, you're going to take things that's more heavy on the science end. And you're going to mix some math in there as well. But it's really geared towards helping prepare students for their, their pathway that they're going to choose as it relates to their career. Because everything right now that we're centered around is college and career readiness. And obviously, many careers in this day and age, you're going to need some college or some type of post-secondary training in order to really get you acclimated to what you're going to need to know, in addition to help you compete you know, in a marketplace where there's a lot of individuals from across the world that's coming in to the Houston area competing for the same jobs. Okay, so this is what the foundation plan looks like uh, you know, with the, uh, the endorsement where you do, you do have that fourth math that you have to pick up and that fourth science that you have to pick up as well. Um, you know, all in all, anything that's centered around the endorsement, there's probably going to be the additional emphasis on the math and sciences. That's just the nature of all of those areas, you know, being heavy in those fields. So this is a distinguished plan, um, you know, where students have the option to earn the endorsement and they would have to complete uh, Algebra 2 as one of the four math credits. Right now, kids have the option if they're not shooting towards the distinguished level of achievement where they don't have to take Algebra 2. And, you know, we don't have, we provided the kids an opportunity to choose whether or not, because we wait, we debated on whether we needed to move as though the governor was going to sign the bill, knowing that by the time the kids would leave is when he would decide to do something. So we were able to let the kids go through it and choose what they, what 
courses they would like, if they would like to retain the algebra class or if they would like to retain the physics class or drop those courses. And so right now, our counselors are working at making changes to schedule based on student request. Uh, obviously, we're going to uh, promote and push those kids to aspire for the distinguished plan. But, you know, the main thing right now is that if you tell a kid you don't have to take physics, you can take environmental systems, or you can take, uh, you know, aerospace or something else, or some other science aquatics, you know, nine times out of ten, they don't take aquatics versus physics. So, you know, it's just one of those things where the career path plays a heavy role in whether or not students are going to stay in those classes and what we encourage them to do. This was originally a voice of um, But basically, uh, this is what the old plans is for, is what transpires from those. In terms of kids that are currently in ninth and 10th grade, 10th and 11th grade, they can graduate on the plans that's currently in place. So obviously, with things change in the state basically every couple of years, and so, you know, we're going to have probably kids in the same household where they're probably three years apart in grades or age, and they're going to both be on, have separate requirements or different requirements for graduation. So, um, this just kind of gives you a rundown of courses that, you know, that the kids have an option to choose from, you know, once they go to each particular graduation plan. So, it's basically, it's a menu. And you can basically select which one you like to take, which route you like to go. That's a good guide for our kids being able to have options and looking at what's on offer and what's available. Yeah. Yeah. So many of our kids have already uh, selected their courses. So now, um, just in terms of looking at students that you know aren't eligible for it, you know they're. They're, they're kind of locked into what had been previously presented to them. And there's a bit of a review for them. But, you know, obviously the kids that are coming to us uh, as freshmen, we make sure that we're clarifying specifically what does it mean for you and those students that have the opportunity to drop courses, what it means to them. So this is really where the counselor's work comes into play in regards to working with each student so that they understand fully what this change means to them in their graduation plan. In addition to that, uh, communicating to the parents, you know, what changes uh, are going to impact their student. And, you know, we're actually having a parent meeting next Thursday and another one in July just to make sure that our parents have uh, ample opportunity to get the information. All right, and these are just some examples, as I mentioned, you know, what a kid could drop based on, you know, their cohort year. So, um, you know, some of the courses that, you know, kids will probably look at and drop it out into two of the back models and Com Apps, which is basically a speech class, you don't need it for graduation anymore. At one point in time, there was a requirement, but now it isn't. And that's one of those things where Com Apps and Phys Ed, each time a legislative session ends, you know, that's, those are some things that change, whether or not the physical education requirement is necessary for graduation. At this point, you still need to have credit. Um, but Com Apps was another half credit course, but that's been taken off of most graduation plans where it's not required. That's just another iteration of it in regards to the history, world history, that could be dropped as well for 10th graders. And this is for our 9th graders where technically, as I mentioned, 9th and 10th graders here and only here, they're tied into eight subject areas and the humanities is one that they're going to have to have a class their ninth and 10th grade year. So this won't necessarily apply for students out of Hawaii school. They're gonna take a world geography class, they're gonna take world history here. So we're kind of making some decisions for them along those lines based on the dynamics of Ivy. Think about your chosen career pathway. Which science and math courses are necessary for your So this is just basically some of the things that we tell the kids. Uh, obviously, I'm sharing the information to them and sharing it with the parents. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier just in regards to them being able to understand if you have post-secondary plans, then it's best to possibly look at the more challenging 
schedule in comparison to wanting to drop those courses that you're probably going to see in college, you know, at some point. So it's better to get that background information now uh, versus taking the easy route out and taking a class that, I mean, you're not going to do much, you know, with aquatics if your desire is to, you know, to, to be a uh, chemist. You know, you need to make sure that you're in a chemistry class so that you can get that information. And that's just procedures for kids uh, to follow to go into the uh, bridges program and change their schedules and what have you. Um, you know, but all in all, um, that's basically the highlights of House Bill 5. Um, there's uh, more or less, I think, as I mentioned before, the primary thing that, you know, we shall hooray for is the fact that our kids won't be tested, you know, in, in many different ways as you can prepare an aid. Because, um, I mean, they were being tested in any which way. So, I mean, it's a bit of a relief for our students as well as for us. Because, I mean, the spring this year was, I mean, it was, it was busy. It was busy. Um, you know, we had probably a six-week stint where we had a different bell schedule based on the fact that we had various tests going on during that six-week six period of time. So, uh, you know, this will definitely help the teachers having more time in the classroom and cover this. It also will help us in ensuring that our students have what they need so that they can be successful. All right? So, um, if you have any questions about anything as it relates to this, or maybe your student in general, uh, you know, I'll be around afterwards, so I'll be more than happy to answer the questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dad. That update and all the things happening with House Bill 5. And that, by the way, it probably had the most support I've ever seen of a, of a school education bill. So that's a lot of folks working together uh, to make that happen. I'd like to reintroduce now Mr. Jim Randall, who's going to talk to us about Humble Area Assistance ministry, Ministries and tell us all the good things going on there. And while he's coming up, uh, Charles Cunningham had to leave. There's been an emergency downtown with Center Point. Uh, apparently five men have been seriously injured uh, in some sort of electrical accident. So please keep those men and their families in your thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> it, it's great to be here today. Uh, if you're looking for somewhere to spend some time tomorrow, especially from 8 o'clock on until the uh, sometimes other part of the afternoon, I invite you to Kingwood Country Club, where we will celebrate the official first day of summer with the golf scramble. Uh, three groups of us are, are partnering in this, and it'll be a great time. I want to start off my comments by saying a big thank you. I look around this room, and I see so many partners to Ham, and I appreciate on behalf of all of Ham what you do with us as we attempt to work with individuals who are very, very similar to each of us, they have arms, they have legs, they have wishes, they have dreams, they have goals. But they find a bump in the road. And that bump in the road leads them to us. And what makes Ham as effective as it is, along with the great staff we have and the great volunteers we have, is the great partners we have in folks like Memorial Herman and Lone Star College. And all of you, many of you, who serve on and work in various committees, that drive the activity. Uh, let me just say a great big thank you for all that you're doing, all the contributions you make, so that we can take persons from a point in time of their life up a step and hopefully down the road differently than what they came to us in the first place. Let me share a couple of big highlights with you. Recently, in the last six weeks, and was elected, and I thought elected because there was a vote taken, to the Collaborative of Care, which is a large conglomerate cooperative in the Houston area. One of the reasons for our participation in that is as we prepare for the changes that are coming through the Affordable Care Act, regardless of our personal positions, there are changes that will be coming. We're going to be a party in assisting individuals find their way through the maze of information that exists. And we're looking forward to many of you also being partners with us as we work in that process. 
The second big thing is another thank you in many ways. Recently, you received some information about an Anderson Foundation grant that we had received, and we had a match that we were seeking to make because of your help and because of others' help. We met that match. And so this summer, child nutrition, which is a very big topic for us, is being addressed. Whenever the students aren't here, believe you me, if they're not at the mall, they're at our offices. And, and they have somewhere to go. They need somewhere to go. We welcome that. And along with that, we have reading programs when they come in the doors that occupy their time in a positive way. But we're, we're excited about the fact that we will be able to do this child nutrition program because of your help and because of the help of others. We have a health fair coming up. Again, partners in the room will be partner uh, working with us. That will be the July 15th date. It happens to coincide with our next food fair. And if you've ever been on First Street on somewhere around the middle of the month and toward the end of the month, and you're driving along and you see people lined up literally for several feet, that is because we're holding one of our food fairs. The mobile food fair, which is a new item that we've added to the agenda, is very, very popular. And quite frankly, you may want to consider being in that line because what we have there is a great stock of food, including meats and poultry and eggs and vegetables and all those things that would make a nutritious meal. That happens on the end of the month. That's an exciting time. Each of these events, and this is a statistic that we should consider as a measure of how we are doing somewhat in our community. Each of these food fair events, we are providing food to nearly 1,000 people. That's significant. We have great growth occurring in our Houston area. I also say to folks, where we have growth, we have folks following that growth, looking for their opportunity. The other thing that is coming up that is real exciting is a new series of parenting classes. Our clients that come to us many times are, are like the rest of us. We have questions about what do you do with our children? What do we do with them when they come up to us and start asking us certain questions? We're in a position this year where we're providing those kinds of classes. We started one series yesterday, and it's very exciting to see those things happen, to see the participation that's occurring. It's always a busy day. If you're, if you're ever wondering what it is like, Come by about 10.05 on any day, Monday through Thursday, and you will get a, a great view of how a team takes a process and takes the needs of individuals and, and works them through, if you will, almost a grocery store format, but it's very comprehensive, and that's the intent, is to be extremely comprehensive and address the needs of those who come in our doors. What we're looking for now is to measure how successful, if you will, we are by taking ones who have come to us in the last month and seeing how long they are with us. We want them with us as long as they are making progress, but we, we want to watch that intentionally, and I close my comments with a great story. This is another illustration of what partnerships do. Yesterday we had a case develop, and I will refer to this person as Linda. That is not her real name for, for privacy reasons. But Linda came to us looking for one particular thing, namely food. When we were finished, we had Linda plugged in through Lone Star College in one way, Family Promise in another way. As we found in our interview and intake session, there was a whole list of issues. This is an individual that is that close, that close to finishing a degree program which will then allow that person to get up on the road to self-sufficiency and self-respect. This person came to us because the option for housing had been eliminated. This person desiring something better for her family knew that there had to be a better option than staying in the car in this kind of weather. And because of the arrangements, because of, of your interest and your care, and you working with us, Today, Linda has a place to stay, Linda is working, and Linda has very, very few weeks to go before she completes a professional level program which will put her on the road to total self-sufficiency. That is what I enjoy telling you. 
That is what I really want to say. Thank you for being a partner with us so that we can meet these kinds of challenges and kinds of us. Thank you today. And if you're interested, you may visit ham.org, hamministries.org, or uh, in order to, to make sure that the folks that did this feel good about it, I have a handful of brochures. See me after the meeting. I'll be happy to distribute that and talk with you more. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for all that you do, all of your staff, team do, uh, volunteers uh, with him to help folks in our area. Now I can do someone who needs no introduction. Our fearless leader, Charlie Brumbo. Um, just want to talk to you just a minute. You've probably never heard me mention anything about Priority One before, so I just wanted to make sure somebody had not ever heard about it. We're in the process of, of continuing to raise our funds for economic development, and uh, we're now at a, right at seventy-nine thousand a year for four years. That's what we uh, what we've raised. We're still looking for more. So if you need to have any spare change around, I'll be glad to. Uh, meet with you afterward and take that. But what I wanted to, what, what I really wanted to do today was to show you some of the things that that uh, were some resources available for you. We uh, several months ago we uh, brought on uh, Michael Pratt. He is an intern for us, uh, and uh, Michael uh, is working on his. Masters in urban planning. He's, he's finished his coursework and he's, he's uh, working on his thesis for, for uh, Masters in Urban Planning with an Economic Development uh, Specialty uh, from the University of New Orleans. <clears throat> and he's with us for, he's a Kingwood boy and hopefully he's going to be with us for a long time. But I wanted to show you some of the things, some of the resources that you had available, come on, Michael, uh, that you're going to have available to you. Uh, through our economic development program, and uh, uh, Michael's going to. One thing he's going to show you is is a new publication we have called an, an overview of economic activities, and we'll have some up here at the front for you to, to pick up uh, at the end of the conclusion. So, uh, uh, Michael, uh, you've got a little slide presentation to show you some of the resources available and some of the things we've been working on. I'm not going to use the microphone. If that's all right. Um, yeah, so I'll just talk a minute about what I've been doing and kind of also try to highlight um, how the economic development program can be uh, a useful resource and a useful tool for your business or for any local business. Uh, Michael, let me stop you one second. Area. We are going to uh, stream this later, so we have to use the microphone, right, Sam? Okay. Please, you don't mind. <laughs> okay. Hey. So, uh, as I said, I just want to highlight uh, the importance uh, that the uh, economic development program can provide uh, as a resource to local businesses. Our main focus, obviously, is retaining and, and, and expanding uh, local businesses in the area. Uh, and so that's our first uh, kind of thing that we try to do. Um, the first kind of important thing that I've been working on is just trying to create uh, relationships uh, since we kind of are operating with uh, with few resources. It's important, as you guys know, to be partners uh, with with whoever you can. Uh, and uh, just a quick plug: the Lone Star College System actually has teamed up with the University of Houston, and they're providing uh, a program where you can basically submit your business uh, through the University of Houston uh, Masters uh, uh, Business Program, and they will help you to work on your website, if you have a commerce website where you sell things on, on the web, they will help you develop that. Uh, so that's just a quick plug for them and that's something that uh, we're also trying to help uh, any business that's interested get enrolled uh, in that program. I enrolled the economic development program uh, in, into, their, uh, into their program to try to get some help from them too. So that's something that uh, you can look into. Um, so basically what we do is we can just provide any type of data that you need, whether it be, uh, you know, how many households are in, you know, a 10 mile radius of your business or uh, any type of market analysis uh, that you need. I use uh, Esri Business Analyst uh, software and uh, another software that I'll talk about uh, in the end that we're trying to uh, acquire. 
uh, hopefully by the end of the year, even before that. Um, like I said, the uh, Texas Workforce Commission, Lone Star College, uh, the Greater Houston Partnership, and Centerpoint, they all provide us with uh, data. So if you or anyone you know uh, with a business needs some type of demographic or market analysis, if you're trying to get more funding, if you're trying to expand, if you're looking for a new location, if you have a friend who owns a business who wants to locate in the area, uh, these are all things that we can do and all resources that we can provide uh, to you basically uh, free of charge. So uh, feel free to call me. I can have uh, my business card if you want to call or send an email. Anything you need, uh, we can do that for you. Uh, this is the uh, software that's actually just been released a few months ago, Sites on Texas 2.0. And that's something that we'll use our economic development funds to hopefully uh, try to get a subscription to. This actually will do a lot more as far as just providing customized reports, uh, any type of location. You can create uh, your own geographic boundaries to a peer community. Uh, if you're trying to compare uh, your business to another business that's in a similar uh, geographical area. Uh, so that's something that we're going to try to work on doing. Uh, this is just proof that uh, we provide effective data to businesses. These are just local uh, folks who work in the area, uh, who own businesses, and have used uh, data that I've provided to them, and this is just them saying, hey, thanks, the data you gave us really helped, and um, you know, we got our loan, or we found our new location, or we did this, or we did that based on the market analysis and demographics uh, that you provided. So this is just proof that uh, I kind of sort of know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, this is something that I've worked on, put together uh, on, a, on just a regular basis. I'm trying to just create in real time uh, a track record of, of business activity in the area. Uh, this is something we printed out. We have copies up here. So if you uh, just are interested in knowing what's going on, what happened in the last couple of years as far as new businesses in the area or any expansions or uh, investments that uh, is relevant to the area. This information will be on here and uh, eventually I'll get this up to our uh, Lake Houston EDP, uh, org website which is the priority one uh, website. Community profile is another thing that I put together. This uh, is for the whole Lake Houston area. This is something that I can uh, provide for you guys. Um, just It's already made so if you want copies of it I can email it. Uh, we can print it out and come out of the office. So, uh, just another thing of uh, business data on this side, so we'll have any business information that you need, and uh, obviously population uh, data on the other side. Because it's important, you know, when you have a business to know about trends, know uh, kind of projected growth, what we've already gone through, and what we kind of plan on seeing uh, in the future. So obviously, uh, any business is going to need uh, information like that. This is just another thing that I worked on. Uh, I created location quotients for each of our uh, industry sectors in the area. So anything above one, we have a high concentration of employment in those sectors. Um, and the baseline of the comparison uh, on that side is Houston, and this side is to the entire state. So uh, obviously these are industries that we're doing pretty well here as far as jobs go. Uh, in these in these industry sectors in the Lake Houston area in comparison uh, to Houston and, and to Texas as a whole. And these are uh, kind of the below one um, industries. So these are kind of industries that uh, we're, I don't want to say not doing so well in, but we have plenty of room to grow. So uh, any type of small, medium, large size business that you guys know of or friends that work for or, or own, um, in these sectors, uh, these are really the sectors that we would, try, would like to support uh, a little bit more and try to really attract and grow uh, in our area. Again, these are just more, that's the, kind of the foundational um, sectors in our, uh, in our local and regional economy. And these are kind of emerging sectors that are actually going to provide over the next you know, 10, 15, 20 years with the you know, guys coming out of high school and gals coming out of high school and college with STEM. Uh, backgrounds, uh, science, technology, engineering, uh, things like that, uh, mathematics, these are all uh, industries that um, we need to look for and uh, try to help uh, support uh, going forward in the future because that's where a lot of jobs are going to be in and they're high paying, uh, good jobs, good benefits, things like that. 
Another thing I worked on, I created a mud list for uh, a lot of muds. I know, you know, if you own a home or a business, uh, a lot of times utilities and the taxing districts is sometimes a little bit tricky, and uh, I've just kind of made an archive of this, and uh, we've got the website for a TCEQ link that you can go and look at a map and see what mud you're in or see what mud a property's in if you're looking to, you know, expand or buy or, or something like that, so. Just some useful information that we can provide. This is our website. I've been trying to just uh, tweak it and update it and try to be more useful. Uh, so if there's anything that maybe you have an idea of that we could do with our website that uh, would be of use to you guys, um, you know, just, just let me know. Shoot me an email or come up to me after, and uh, I'll be happy to do that for you. So um, any, type, any type of resource, any type of, uh, of data or anything like that that we can provide, um, we're here to help. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Darcy, for all the uh, work you guys are doing with Priority One. Our final speaker is Miss Veronica Villegas with Skilla Engineering. Is that what I'm asking, Skilla? Skilla. Veronica. I'd like to introduce my teammate, Angel Medina, who will be assisting me today. Um, we have a presentation to go with this PowerPoint. Um, we're from Scylla Engineering and we are a service disabled, veteran owned small business operating right here at Bumble. And we're here today just to give you some more information about a charity golf tournament that we're hosting. And 100% um, of the proceeds will go to benefit the Simplified Fund. The charity golf tournament is taking place on Friday, August 30th at the Club of Kingwood. And we'll be playing on the fourth floor. So now Mr. Regina will give you some more information about the Simplified Fund. The Simplified Fund is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that helps uh, wounded servicemen and women uh, return from combat with a number of different issues they occur at the uh, life-changing events happen. This awesome, this awesome foundation was created in 2004 by a United States Marine uh, Colonel's wife. Uh, as a RN, she wanted to help more servicemen and women with medical issues and their families. Since then, since 2004, she had raised uh, seven, $76 million. Uh, that's partly because of 94 cents for every dollar the rate goes to the simple platform directly to um, service men and women. Although the Department of Defense takes care of their troops, uh, there's many situations that arise where insurance is not, medical insurance doesn't cover. Take for instance a uh, IED, burn victim. That person, you know, when they get released from the hospital, they may not be able to sleep in a bed like you and I can. You know, they may need a recliner. One call from that person's family, the simple platform will, will provide every client for that person so they can see comfortably. Um, another instance would be something like a service man um, or women receiving medical attention in Virginia needs to fly to Houston for our uh, medical facilities we have here in technology. A Department of Defense may pay for that person to fly to Houston, but how about his wife? How about her plane ticket? How about her lodging? Uh, how about his mother who needs to go from Florida to Virginia to watch the kids while he's going to the street? The Simplified Fund will help with that. They'll help with the funding. Um, I could talk forever about stories, but we would like to show you a video, if we can, of uh, a person that received uh, direct money and help from the Simplified Fund.
want to turn the floor back to Ms. Vieira, so I would just say uh, these men and women have done so much. You, know, you guys are able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, um, we have several different levels of sponsorship, um, ranging from 500 to 3,000. Um, we also are taking in-kind sponsorships, which is any dollar amount that you want to give. Um, if you're a small business owner and you have maybe gift cards or products that you wish to donate for a raffle, we'll take that as well. Um, if you know your family members, friends that you think want to play golf, we we'll take individual golf team members. Anything you can do to assist us, we greatly appreciate. So, um, Outside of the registration table, we have registration forms, and if you want to leave your contact information, we can come to you and speak directly to you and your company, give it as a presentation. Um, we appreciate any help you can assist us with giving back to our veterans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. You may see on your program that Dave Boston is going to be here. He had a uh, conflict arise this morning and had to uh, change plans. And but he did ask if we could have him at our next business conference. We're going to try to schedule him for that. David is supposed to be known played in the NFL for a number of years and was a humble high school graduate as well. <coughs> Speaking of the next business con, mark October 3rd in your calendars. Right here at Humble High School at uh, 11 o'clock. And some other announcements. We have a uh, salute to the health care luncheon, which is our next third Tuesday luncheon is uh, July 16th, and it is the salute to the health care. So uh, make plans to attend that. Is that July 25th or June 25th? Uh, July 25th at 5 o'clock is uh, at family time is the new members welcome reception. No, it's June. It is June. Okay. <laughs> That's next week. Next week. Yeah, next uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday. <coughs> August 21st is the uh, uh, Lake Houston 10K 5K. That's always a, a great event. So if you. August 24th. 24th. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a good thing I have all these folks up there. So uh, August 24th, Lake Houston 10K 5K. Stephanie, I think you can answer your questions on that. Yes, um, the Lake Houston um, 10K 5K presented by Memorial Herman Northeast is August 24th at Kings Harbor. If you want to run, walk, participate, come out and just enjoy the event, you may do so uh, by visiting uh, LakeHouston10K5K.com. And I'm also here to answer any questions or to help you get registered or volunteer. However I can help you, let me know. We would love to get you all out there. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, I think while we have some announcements, like uh, Dr. Pearson wanted to make a quick announcement about Lone Star College and a great opportunity they have with uh, the oil and gas industry. Well, we've been looking for 15 to 20 acres that are not in the residential area that we could work out a deal on mineral rights to put uh, about a 10 plus million dollar oil rig to do all kinds of programs and trainings from roughnecks all the way through petroleum engineering. So it will end up training a lot of individuals, and all of these have entry-level wages that are exceptionally good, as good as we have in our health care programs. So if you know of anyone who has you know, 15 to 20 acres and a high visibility place, not residential, because this will run 24-7, let me know. <laughs> Great. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Jennifer Dampler from Including Kids. It's a nonprofit for children with autism. And I just wanted to let you know that um, July 15th, we are partnering with the Kingwood Country Club and it's Autism Appreciation Day. It's a Monday, so the club will be closed, but the water park will be open for families of children with autism just to go have a nice, fun day and not have to worry about their kiddos and, and perception of other people. And so it's just going to be a nice, relaxed, fun day, free for the community. And so. You're welcome to join that. I encourage you to spread that word so more families can take opportunity for that. Um, and then the other one is this Saturday we're doing a free babysitter training course. So if you have teens or know of people, um, autism has the highest rate of divorce because the parents can't go get the average babysitter. And so what we're trying to do is get more teens and uh, young people in the community who can babysit these children. So if you know of anyone who 
is maybe interested in getting some skill sets to help take care of children with special needs, that's this Saturday. You can check it all out on our website at includingkids.org. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other announcements? Upcoming events or anything? Okay. Well, with that, you're welcome to stay and, and do some networking and uh, visit. I do want to uh, announce Amanda Martin, who was our liaison for the chamber for the Humble BizCom, has uh, taken a position with uh, Mike Sullivan's office, tax assessment collector. But we're in good hands with Trish Hummer and Trey Wade over there. And uh, Stephanie helps out uh, a lot in planning. You know, anytime you have an event, it just doesn't happen. A lot of things have to take place uh, to get all this in order and get sponsors lined up and food and all that. So thank you for all that you do. And then raise your hand if you're on the advisory group. Uh, Jamie Smith, I know, is here. And we have about eight of us, and some of them were able to make it today. Uh, Charles, uh, Dr. Ned's on there. And, and so, again, uh, and Mr. Bro, huh? Or, uh, is on our Do you want to raise your hand, huh? <laughs> So, anyway, thank you, you all for all that you do. And again, hope to see you again on October 3rd. And have a great rest of the summer. We'll see you soon. Thank you.